Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and today I'm going to show you how to build one of the instructional tools I use when introducing Programmable Logic Controllers, or PLCs. The goal is to make an inexpensive, portable PLC training board that can be utilized to first introduce PLC programming and demonstrate various PLC basic program functions like latching, timers, and counters. Is this the world's most inexpensive PLC trainer? No. Most likely, the PLC trainer I built in the Build a PLC Trainer featuring the Tico SG2 PLR is substantially less expensive. However, this trainer features a far more robust basic PLC that not only includes analog inputs, but also the programming software has a far more sophisticated simulation utility. This being said, it's slightly more expensive, necessitates an external accessory power supply, and the EasySoft programming software necessitates purchase to download a program to a real device although the simulation portion is free. I really feel the cost and benefits kind of balance each other out, and when you get right down to it, this trainer probably still costs less than your average textbook. This version of the PLC trainer features the Eaton EZ512 DCR Intelligent Relay, an inexpensive basic programmable logic controller featured in the example PLC, Eaton EZ512 DCR Intelligent Relay Lecture, available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched this lecture yet, only dimly recall its contents, please take the time to do so now. To reduce the expense of this trainer, I've made use of interface elements like switches and pilot lamps already included in the basic motor control kit. The orientation of the basic motor control kit lecture, available at the Big Bad Tech channel, details the elements within this inexpensive kit. If one already has this kit, the only item necessary to complete this version of the basic PLC trainer is a 24 volt DC power supply, an Eaton Easy 512 DCR Intelligent Relay, a fully functional copy of the Eaton Easy Soft Programming Software, and a communications cable. It may be a recommended practice to have students build this exact trainer board, use it a couple times to get the hang of it, then disassemble it and build a real PLC controlled system using real actuators. Additionally, this trainer needn't be assembled on a separate board, but rather can be built on the motor control trainer board detailed in the Build a Motor Control Trainer Board lecture available at the Big Bad Tech channel. This being said, I like the small separate trainer board because it's portable and focuses just on the PLC of interest. If your resources are limited and your time is short, you could theoretically get by with just this PLC specific trainer, although I wouldn't recommend it. Start by assembling two four hole push button enclosures, four switches, and four 24 volt DC rated pilot lights. For the purposes of this trainer, we'll be making use of a normally open maintain contact selector switch as input one, a normally closed momentary contact red push button as input 2, a normally open momentary contact green push button as input 3, and a normally open momentary contact yellow push button as input 4. For starters, we'll need a small plywood board, a length of DIN rail, some wire duct, a couple terminal blocks and end brackets, as well as a power cord and circuit breaker. Lock out and tag out the bare power cord before your lazy lab partner gets curious, plugs it in, and hurts someone. First, Mount the two push button enclosures centered on the top and bottom of the plywood board and mount the DIN rail in the center. Then, surround the DIN rail and push button enclosures with wire duct forming kind of like an H with two horizontal rungs. Mount the cord and secure to the board with a strain relief. Then, land the line, neutral, and ground wire respectively on the circuit breaker input, terminal block, and grounding block. Mount the power supply next door then route the line output of the circuit breaker and neutral terminal block to the line and neutral input of the power supply. Note the power supply I'm making use of here is something I had on hand and is a bit of an overkill for this application. You might be able to get by with a smaller and cheaper 30 watt 24 volt DC power supply. Mount the Eat and Easy Intelligent Relay next door then route the positive and negative of the power supply to the 24 volt DC input of the Eat and Easy 512 DCR Intelligent Relay. The light blue and gray wires serve this purpose. Next, we need to wire up our input. Start by wiring the positive terminal of the 24 volt DC power supply to the input of each switch. The light blue wire serves this purpose. Note the daisy chain connection pools the input terminals of the normally open maintain contact selector switch, the normally closed momentary contact red push button, the normally open momentary contact green push button, and the normally open momentary contact yellow push button. The closure of any particular switch would energize only that particular switch's output with 24 volt DC. Note the electromechanical nature of the red push button in this second hole is normally closed, 
whereas all other switches are normally open. This detail will become exceedingly important when we discuss the electromechanical nature of a particular switch versus the programmed instructions assigned to a particular input. Now, each switch's output terminal needs to be routed to the appropriate PLC input terminal. Let's start by landing a brown spiraled wire on the output terminal of the normally open maintain contact selector switch. A red spiraled wire on the output terminal of the normally closed momentary contact red push button. An orange spiraled wire on the output terminal of the normally open momentary contact green push button. And a yellow spiraled wire on the output terminal of the normally open momentary contact yellow push button. Then we need to land the output of the switches to the appropriate input terminals of the PLC. The brown spiraled wire from the normally open maintain contact selector switch goes to I1. The red spiraled wire from the normally closed momentary contact red push button goes to I2. The orange spiraled wire from the normally open momentary contact green push button goes to I3. And the yellow spiraled wire from the normally open momentary contact yellow push button goes to I4. Note we will not be making use of inputs I5 to I8 for this trainer. Now we can button up the top wire duct, an input push button enclosure, and theoretically never have to deal with rewiring inputs ever again. This is a major advantage of PLCs over hardwire relay based ladder logic. One can wire up a set of inputs once and simply reprogram the device to perform an entirely new function without the time consuming necessity of rewiring it. Let's now wire up the outputs. Let's start by wiring the positive terminal of the 24 volt DC power supply to the one terminal of each electromechanical relay output. The light blue wire serves this purpose. Note the daisy chained connection pools all the one terminals of each relay such that the closure of any particular relay would energize only that particular relay's output terminal 2 with 24 volts DC. Let's now prep our output by pooling the low side X2 connection of each pilot lamp with a negative terminal of the 24 volt DC power supply. The light gray daisy chained wire serves this purpose. Now, land a brown spiraled wire on the first pilot lamp's high X1 terminal, a red spiraled wire on the second pilot lamp's high X1 terminal, an orange spiraled wire on the third pilot lamp's high X1 terminal, and a yellow spiraled wire on the fourth pilot lamp's high X1 terminal. Then we need to wire the electromechanical relay output of the PLC to the appropriate pilot lamp. The brown spiraled wire for the first pilot lamp goes to the output of Q1. The red spiraled wire for the second pilot lamp goes to the output of Q2. The orange spiraled wire for the third pilot lamp goes to the output of Q3. And the yellow spiraled wire for the fourth pilot lamp goes to the output of Q4. Now we can button up the bottom wire duct and output pilot lamp enclosure. Theoretically, never have to deal with rewiring outputs ever again. Snap the side wire ducts closed, and you've got yourself a fully functional PLC trainer for less than the price of a textbook. Now that is effective education on a budget. Why are you spending hundreds of dollars on a textbook that you never use? I mean, let's be honest here. When you can use this free online resource and spend your money on building a real device you can really use. But I digress. This kind of ends the instructional portion of this short lecture. However, if you're already skilled in programming the Eaton Easy 512 DCR Intelligent Relay, one could perform a quick functions test of the as-assembled trainer. A recommended test procedure is a simple four-rung program where each input has been instantiated as a make instruction controlling one input. I1 to Q1, I2 to Q2, I3 to Q3, and I4 to Q4. When we power up, program and place the Eaton Easy 512 DCR Intelligent Relay in run mode, note the status display indicates input 2 is energized in the deactivated state and output Q2 is asserted. This is to be expected since the electromechanical nature of the input device assigned to input 2 is normally closed, whereas all others are normally open. When only the normally open selector switch connected to input 1 is actuated, the status display shows that input 1 and 2 are energized and outputs Q1 and Q2 are asserted, as can be expected. When only the normally closed red push button connected to input 2 is actuated, the status display shows that all inputs are de-energized and all outputs are de-energized, as can be expected. When only the normally open green push button connected to input 3 is actuated, the status display shows inputs 2 and 3 are energized, as can be expected, and outputs Q2 and Q3 are asserted, as can be expected. Finally, when only the normally open yellow push button connected to input 4 is actuated, the status display shows that inputs 2 and 4 are energized 
and outputs Q2 and Q4 are asserted as can be expected. Here's the same sequence monitoring the operational program. Note when all switches are in the deactivated state, the make instruction examining input 2 allows logical continuity to Q2 since the electromechanical deactivated state of the device attached to input 2 is normally closed, whereas all other devices are normally open. When only the normally open selector switch connected to input 1 is actuated, the operational program shows logical continuity exists for outputs Q1 and Q2 with a highlighted bold rung. When only the normally closed push button connected to input 2 is actuated, the operational program shows that no outputs are energized. When only the normally open green push button connected to input 3 is actuated, the operational program shows inputs 2 and 3 are allowing logical continuity onto outputs Q2 and Q3 with a highlighted bold rung. Finally, when only the normally open yellow push button connected to input 4 is actuated, the operational program is showing that inputs 2 and 4 are allowing logical continuity onto outputs Q2 and Q4 with a highlighted bold rung. Here's the same sequence zoomed out so one can see the actuation state of the input devices and output pilot lamps. Note when all switches are in the deactivated state, the pilot lamp attached to output Q2 is on. When only the normally open selector switch connected to input 1 is actuated, the first and second pilot lamp are illuminated. When only the normally closed red push button connected to input 2 is actuated, all pilot lamps are off. When only the normally open green push button connected to input 3 is actuated, the second and third pilot lamps are on. Finally, when only the normally open yellow push button connected to input 4 is actuated, the second and fourth pilot lamps are on. If any input or output fails to perform as expected using this simple test procedure and program, lock out and tag out the system and get to work troubleshooting the source of your problems. Most likely it's a disconnected wire or the presence of your lazy lab partner. Alright, that's about it for this short lecture. We'll be making use of this inexpensive PLC trainer in later applications exercises. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.